Scientists reported earlier this year western states are experiencing the worst mega drought in at least 1,200 years. Yeah, they say climate change has made the issue 72% worse. The drought has fueled wildfires and threatened the economic security of farmers. And now it's endangering the security of energy and water resources for nearly 6 million homes and businesses across seven states. Lake Powell, the second largest man-made reservoir in the country, is drying up. Now, if water levels at the lake drop another 32 feet, all hydroelectric production would stop at the re reservoir's Glen Canyon Dam. Now, the Interior Department is now facing a difficult decision, save water or electricity. Imagine that choice. Now, the crisis is forcing government officials to take drastic measures to keep both power and water flowing to Americans in the West. So joining us now to talk a little bit more about this is Dartmouth College Assistant Professor of Geography, Justin Mankin. He's also the co-lead of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration Drought Task Force. Uh, Professor Mankin, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, Professor, uh, as you know, over the last uh, several years, the Glen Canyon Dam in the Colorado River has lost about 16 percent of its capacity to generate power. What will the loss of hydroelectricity mean for the residents in the west in the western part of the country? Yeah, I mean, I think I think the situation here is that we're in uncharted territory um, and every action that the Bureau of Reclamation is undertaking right now is in this effort to to buy time to figure out precisely th that question. I think there was an expectation that any loss of hydropower from Glen Canyon could be compensated um, from other sources. Turns out that the implementation of that is, is an incredible challenge. And so I think this effort to, to siphon some water from Flaming Gorge in Wyoming is, is about this effort to buy time. I think the issue is that this drought, um, which is plaguing 94% of Western U.S. territory, 80% of which is in severe or worse drought, um, that drought doesn't care about time. It has all the time in the world, and, it, and it's not showing signs of going away. Right, that drought does not care about time, and it does not care about uh, the people that are supposedly is supposed to be getting water from this area. So, Professor Mankin, as you know, this year, the Interior Department recommended releasing less water from Lake Powell to downstream states. More than 110 billion gallons of water have already been held back so far this year. So what options do residents have there as their water supply dwindles? Yeah, I mean, I think the the challenge here is that water districts in the Western United States are, are dramatically under-resourced to manage the duality that climate change is asking us to, to manage, which is, you know, kind of managing the acute crisis of a drought that's happening now on the one hand, while also investing resources to make a community more resilient to droughts like this in the future from climate change. Um, when you're under-resourced, it, it's really hard to do that, um, and it leads to, to politically expedient measures like, um, 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 you know, draconian wa water cuts and, and things like that. The thing is, is that for a lot of communities in the Western United States, you know, year-on-year -year, um, per capita water consumption has actually been going down um, because droughts like this are happening more frequently. I think the longer term context is really essential for viewers to understand, you know, this last two and a half years of drought is just the latest, you know, in a much longer string of droughts that have occurred since, um, you know, about the year 2000 that make up this, this period of aridity called the, um, now being called the millennium drought. Um, and so water managers have been working really hard over the last two years to kind of deal with this Sophie's choice of managing reservoir levels um, and, and keeping, you know, keeping them high enough to produce hydropower for the some six million homes across seven Western U.S. states, right, or to uh, provide water deliveries to the downstream, Lake Mead, you know, in feeding Arizona, California, um, and, um, and, and Nevada. The, the thing is, is that the communities that are going to be affected by this, we're just going to see, and this, and this is, you know, emblematic of, of wider climate change, is that it uh, most acutely affects the poorest among us. And so there are huge distributional implications of something like a drought in that it's the, the, the poorest farmers, 
uh, the ones with the least senior water rights, they are going to be the ones suffering the cuts uh, most severely. Water power, it seems yeah. like an impossible choice there. Yeah, good points there. Yeah. Justin Mankin, professor, thank you. My pleasure.